Hello and welcome back. Today I'll be showing how to make a login page and how to store data for each username in MIT App Inventor. To demonstrate this, here's the project that we'll be making. First, we have to make an account and log in. And to demonstrate the data saving part, I'll make two accounts. The usernames have to be different, by the way. Once I've made both my accounts, let's log into the app itself. Now I'm simply going to select a number and save it to this label. In this case, I'm going to pick the number 3. When I save the value, it saves that number to the username, in this case, apples. Now, let's log out and open our second account, bananas. Here I'll select a different number, being 1, and I'll save that value. When I swap back to my apples account, we can see that the saved value is still 3, and it has not changed at all showing that the data is saved to each username. Now, onto how the code itself works. The whole code relies on the TinyDB component in the app. How exactly does this component work? This component works as a storage for data saved and used in your app. It stores data using a value pair method. When I want to store data in the app, in this case, a number, I'd store it under a tag. Whenever I ask the TinyDB component to add a value to that specific tag, it will replace whatever is in the tag with the new requested value. When I call the TinyDB to retrieve the value of a tag, it will display whatever is saved inside of that tag, and I can make it add something else if no data is found in the tag. Now that we know how the TinyDB component works, let's see how we can use it to help us make a login for our app. First, the Make an Account page. This part is quite simple. When we open the app to the screen, what you want to do is store a list to the TinyDB, for two tags, username and password. We're going to be storing multiple usernames and passwords, and if we simply just used inputs without a list, we'd end up only storing one username and password at a time, which defeats the whole point of a username and password. The way the list works is, when we add a username to the list, at the same time we're also adding a password to its respective lists, so they end up in the same position. For example, if I added a username and password now, they'd both be stored in the first row of each list. This way, when we go to the login screen to see if the usernames and passwords match, we can simply check if the information in the same rows match. But for now, back to the tiny DBs. Now that we've made an empty list, we can make our new account. This bit of code simply does four things. First, it checks if the input in the username box is empty. And if it is not, then it checks for the password box. If that's not empty, then it checks to see if any other account has the same username. If all of that is met, the lists are also saved to their tiny DB storage tags, username and password. If we look back at the top, where it calls the tag, if someone wants to make another account, instead of replacing the tags with an empty list, it brings back the existing list so you can simply add on to it. Now that we've dealt with making an account, let's log in. When we log in, we use variables to make two empty lists. Then, when the screen initializes, we set those variables to get the value stored in the tiny db tags username and password. We do this because it allows for the existing lists to replace the empty list made by the variables. Now, when the user wants to input their username, I made it so that they have to select their username from a list. If you're making an app meant to suit several users, you may want to approach this differently, but since I'm here to demonstrate how the data is saved, we'll use the list. So I set the elements of the list picker to the username list, so the user can pick their username. It's helpful to set the text displayed on the list picker to their selected username, for convenience. Now, time to enter your password. When you do that and click the login button, the code does two things, and this is where your list comes in. When you click the login button, it's going to check what position your username was on the username list. For example, it could be row 1, row 2, and more. The rows are what is referred to as an index, so row 1 would be the first index, row 2 would be the second index, and so on. So once it finds the exact row your username is in, it then goes on to the password list, in which it then checks what password is stored in the row of the selected username. Since usernames and passwords are stored in the same rows of their respective lists, the password entered should match the row selected of the password list. If it doesn't, it'll simply display an error message. However, if it does, then the app makes a new tiny DB storage tag called Identity. 
which is where all the data storing actually happens now. It selects your username and makes that the value stored, and then it takes you to the fourth screen, the number selecting one. Now, if you can see here, the tags look quite different. Now let me explain why we do this. Normally, if the app was only made for one person, I'd just use one tag. In this case, the tag would just be called number, to save the value of the number selected. But if we're using several usernames, then the value in the number would be shared among all the profiles, and that ruins the purpose of adding usernames in the first place. What we're going to do is make our tags unique now. As you can see, the way the code works is, it takes the value of the identity tag, being the text of your username. Then, it takes that value and makes it part of the tag of another tiny DB. It combines your username, apples, for example, with the word number, to make a new tag called number apples. Why do we do this? Whenever we log in using a certain username, the identity tag will have its value changed to the text of the username, in which only one username of its type can exist, meaning that no two accounts are going to be called apples. When we open this number picking screen, the tiny DB tags that the numbers are stored in will only be numbered apples, meaning that any number I pick on this account will only be present if I log in with the apples account. When I log in with the bananas account, the tiny DB tag present would be number bananas, meaning that no matter what I do, the data from number apples won't be on this account, since they are two different tags. This makes it so that for any number of accounts that I make, the data saved on them will be different, which is how the whole data saving part works. Now that you understand how this app works, you can try to make your own project. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. Thank you and goodbye.